Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon from wherever in the world you may be. It is February 5th, 2014. This is Nature of Reality Radio. I am your host, Andrew Fisher. And today, broadcasting from the suburbs of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, we will be having Unified Soul Franco De Nicola on the show. Franco is a unified soul who can remember 90% of his past lives. I'm sure we'll be discussing why he can't remember 10% of it. There must be some significance to that. But by the way, folks, just want to get a little disclaimer out. If you don't hear my voice, that's because the power probably went out of my house. We had some pretty bad uh, ice, icy rainstorms and a lot of snowfall here in the Philadelphia area. So if the power goes out, it's probably because uh, a tree or something hit the power line. So just try to stick around till 8 if possible. I will always try to get on the air. But now you know why I wouldn't be on the air if if I do get off. So anyway, I guess we'll um, start with the news. Uh, by the way, Franco is an expert of all sorts as far as I'm concerned when it comes to consciousness and metaphysics and love. I've listened to listened to all of his uh, appearances on the C.J. Miller show on the N5D radio network on blogtalkradio.com. And he's a very knowledgeable and fascinating individual indeed. So I'm very pleased to have him on my show tonight. But first, the news from Infowars.com. By the way, before I get into the news, I discovered over the weekend that Alex Jones is obviously lying when he says that the reason he interrupts people so much is because he knows what people are going to say. You know what? I'm not going to get into that now. When I have Brian Tui, who wrote the book The Fix is In, talking about how sports is rigged all over the world, and uh, when I have him on my show on the 19th, two Wednesdays from now, I'll get into why that is, and I know Brian Toey's going to get a kick out of what I have to say. You'll guys find out what I'm talking about when that happens. But anyway, let's see what we got here in terms of the news. Stalkers dream Google Glass and facial recognition for the common man. The app, now in beta, will be released this quarter. Another sign of the NSA wanting to spy on everybody, Google Glass, glasses of sorts that you wear that Google obviously created, and facial recognition software totally designed to be something out of George Orwell's book, 1984. He was no fool. He knew the name of the tune. He wrote that book to warn us, and he did it under the guise of fiction. One difference, I believe, with that book is they actually had to hide the Big Brother apparatus from the common people because they thought the people would be against it. Nowadays, on the other hand, you got so many people say, well, I don't care if they're spying on me. I got none to hide. Well, folks, for your information, that nothing to hide excuse is an old trick used by tyrants to brainwash you into giving up liberty for security. They want to microchip you, and they want to take away your free will because they want global totalitarian government. So you might as well exercise your rights regardless of whether or not you have something or nothing to hide, because if you don't, you're going to get conquered. Well, actually, you're not, because the New World Order cannot take over on planet Earth. We'll be talking about that with, with Franco without question. But anyway, next headline, U.S. Postal Service announces his, uh, U.S. Postal Service announces giant ammo purchase. The privately owned U.S. Postal Service, that is. Ammo purchase reminds me of the DHS purchasing all that ammo, those hollow point bullets, which are banned under Geneva Protocol. They wouldn't be stocking those up for target practice like they claim. It's definitely for some other sinister purposes, like maybe preparing for a collapse to protect themselves from the common people who will be rioting to get out of the collapse, which the power elites engineered. (laughs) All right, moving on. Senior congressman attempts to get FBI director to say investigative journalism is a crime. Well, that senior congressman obviously has something to hide because he wouldn't want investigative journalists not investigating him unless he had something to hide, now would he? I sound like a tyrant of government, don't I? Well, who is this uh, senior congressman? I don't have time to look into it, but it says here in the subheadline he calls Glenn Greenwald a thief selling stolen material. Talk about not having freedom of the press. Just because Glenn Greenwald worked in the UK does not mean he doesn't have freedom of the press. Everybody's got the same rights. Your rights are given to you by infinite consciousness, also known as the creator. That's the only being that can give and take away rights. So this guy's got a lot of of nerve to say Glenn Greenwald, who exposed Edward Snowden's revelations through the media, should be called a thief selling stolen material. Alex Jones discusses downfall of dinosaur media on Jesse Ventura's new show. Jesse Ventura was on the Alex Jones show to talk about uh, things. I didn't see that interview, but uh, I'm sure it was a fascinating interview. I'm sure Alex doesn't interrupt people when he's a guest on their shows as much as he does like when he's uh, when people are on his show. All right, Alex, I'm screwing with you if you're listening. I'm sorry. I love you very much. I love your attitude. That's why I listen to you. 
because you helped me overcome my fears with all your fear mongering. Thanks a lot, Alex. But anyway, uh, pile of pillows prompts school lockdown. Bomb squad required to defuse volatile situation. Pile of pillows, a volatile situation. Come on, man. My God. We becoming a nation of wussies or what? Maybe Ed Rendell, the former Pennsylvania governor, was right when he said America's become a nation of wussies after a Eagles-Vikings 2009 NFL game was postponed because heavy snow caused public safety concerns. Give me a break. Next headline, mainstream media collapsing, New York Times now irrelevant, according to its own writers. <laughs> well, if you want to find a better place to write, you can join InfoWars or, hey, call me, I'll be I'll be happy to let you on my show, I guess, if you're willing to do some investigative journalism for a change. <laughs> it's good to know that the New York Times and the mainstream media are collapsing. We better go after the media, not the government, because if we go after the government, it's not going to help as much. Because if the media is forced by the common people to expose government corruption, well, they'll have no choice but to expose government corruption and the new world order might fall. It's better to go after media than the government. Trust me on this one. Millions of Americans teetering on edge of financial ruin. Yes, and some guy recently said that March 4th, 2014 would be the day of a huge economic collapse. Well, I hope he's wrong. But uh, but feel sorry for all those Americans. I mean, uh, I'm not in a lot of financial trouble. I mean, I am in a little bit of debt on my credit card, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that I bought a lot of survival stuff. I, might, I just bought uh, three packs of non-GMO food seeds from MyPatriotSupply.com, one of the best... Uh, Sites to stock up on food and seeds and things to repair in case there's an economic collapse. And uh, I could also use those to, to barter. Seeds might be more valuable than gold and silver when if the dollar becomes worthless, you need something to use as money. Maybe consider using seeds. And what else do we have here? Last story before I get Franco on. TSA blasted for dishonest response to whistleblower's expose. Angry travelers flood TSA blog to slam agency's glib rebuttal. Well, the TSA is obviously not about safety. I already explained this when I said that, uh, in an earlier show when I said that the only episode of Conspiracy Theory with Jesse Ventura that did not air in the most recent season was the TSA episode. The people at the uh, True TV did not explain why. We all remember how the uh, FEMA camp episode only aired once because Alex Jones and company and I think even the people at True TV got – Got a lot of threats for, because that episode aired and exposed the fact that they're building concentration camps all across the country to uh, imprison people who don't go along with the New World Order system and how they might unleash a virus to force people to become imprisoned or, and whatnot. But the TSA is part of the DHS, so it kind of makes sense they would threaten them and say, don't uh, air this episode, it'll make us look really bad. And uh, what's really disgusting about the TSA is they relegated you to cargo because your uh, ticket refers to your airline ticket, refers to you as a passenger. Legally speaking, that's a commercial term, and the legal definition of a word is always different than the standard English dictionary definition of a word. By calling you a passenger, they put you in commerce, and that means they've relegated you to cargo, which means it is not illegal for them to search you the way they do. Well, that, that's really disgusting. It shows that the government not only wants to break your dignity, but it, it considers you to be worthless cattle and cargo, basically. They obviously do consider you to be cattle because of those... Uh, those body scanners. Always take a pet down, folks. Always. That those scanners are radioactive. The people who work for the TSA are putting themselves at risk. A couple of times I've gone through the Philly airport, I've uh, said, I'd like to take a pet down. I don't want radiation. And and the guy from the scanner and the guy said, uh, there is no radiation there. And I gave him a look of sadness to try to make it clear to him that he's mistaken. And I told him, that's what the government wants us to think, sir. And uh, funny, after I said that, I got a relatively gentle pat down, almost like the TSA was trying to thank me for warning them or something. But uh, but anyway, I think that's enough in regards to the news. So without further ado, uh, I think this is Franco, area code 905. Franco, are you on? Is that you? Yes, yes I am. Can you hear me? How you Hello? doing? Oh, my God. I hear you breaking up immensely. Um, I don't know. I had this problem with Blog Talk Radio last week, and apparently they haven't fixed it. I mean, hopefully it'll become fixed, but... Uh, have you by any chance had any problem hearing me? No, actually you're coming very clear and uh uh I'm also and I'm on a landline so the and it's a direct line, so it should be pretty clear unless uh you know there's something on your end. All right. 
I didn't hear anything you said, but since I cannot understand what you're saying, I hate to think it's some sort of a hack or something on my show to to keep me from hearing this, but uh, if anybody in the chat room is having any problems, I'd like you to, to tell me. But Franco, since um, this seems to be a problem and I cannot hear you very clearly, I think the only way I'm going to be able to deal with this is I'm going to have to give a question to you and let's not engage in conversation. I'll just give a question. You say everything. I won't be able to hear a damn thing you're saying. But after you finish speaking and I don't hear you talking for maybe two to three seconds, I'll assume you're done speaking and then I will move on to the next question. Is that okay with you? Sure, that works for me. Okay. Franco, starting off, you are a unified soul which can remember 90% of your past lives. And uh, first of all, tell us what a unified soul is and maybe explain how you got to be in that position, what you, how you got the privilege or the, the luck, so to speak, to get that position in life compared to most people who have that ability but can't access it because we all have it. It's just you are blessed, so to speak. And also, um, after you explain that, why is it that not a full 100% of your past life you can remember? Okay, well, I'll uh, I'll uh, clarify that part. The actual uh, clarification regarding the 90%, that means 90% accessibility to consciousness and the streaming of op, uh, of uh, frequency that operates within that realm. So uh, I did go for a period of time where I had uh, removed 80% of accessibility, so I only functioned in only 20% for 39 or so years between age 5 and, and uh, 44. And then uh, after at 44, uh, the uh, memory or I should say accessibility to uh, higher consciousness to source consciousness itself started to come back now the only reason I have only 90% of accessibility is because the last 10% will tip over the the operating frequency so that it would be very very difficult to be remaining in a human form and fluctuate between third fourth and fifth dimensional consciousness when my consciousness is actually roaming at 7 to 9 and also access is 12 so it be, basically it becomes a, a functionality and also a relatability to uh, humanity. So that's the reason. Now, uh, as for accessibility in the memory of past lives, that's different. That I have access to all past lives if I choose to do so, which I don't really put too much uh, effort into looking into. Actually, I don't even have any interest in anymore. There was a upon, uh, once upon a time that I did for curiosity, kind of want to do a review point, and I did go through the various uh, levels of seeing some of the lives. Now, when we're referring to the whole idea of um, a unified soul, well, each and every soul uh, is fragmented souls. Basically, it's source itself that kept fragmenting and fragmenting, and each time it fragments, it creates a cluster of souls or at least one soul. And then it splits up and splits up until you get to the final split, which is basically the split that we're at at this point in time. Now, that doesn't mean it's only on this planet. There are multitudes of planets that host the same type of uh, splitting. But what I'm talking about when it comes to a uh, unified soul is basically the last split we did is that there, we are two, one soul that has actually split with a similar signature. Because what happens every time we fragment we create a different signature. Now, the signature is very similar except for the last few uh, digits within the signature so that, you know, the, say the soul families that are connected to the oversouls or the different levels of oversouls uh, will have a similarity of uh, access code. So each one will stream slightly different frequency to have a different experience. Now, when it comes to the final split, uh, which is the, 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 the last signature, it actually split once more, and the two halves uh, both had the identical signature throughout. So operating in the same exact frequency, streaming the same level of consciousness and so forth at the starting point. Then the two souls have chosen to not to interconnect with one another and basically have projected different physicalities. And uh, these physicalities may be at different age range. They may be on this planet, one on the planet, one off the planet. It would be one on one planet, one being on this planet. So each uh, part of the soul would actually go and choose on its own to incarnate or to create projections or what you call holograms in different planets. So it does, it does that. 
Now, once the two soul, the two halves have completed their enlightenment process, so this is what what occurs is that you go through a complete forgetfulness that you are source itself and your accessibility to all levels of consciousness that relate to source and creator essence is not accessible. So that means you're putting veils, you're putting filters in so that you cannot see it. So you would experience whatever projection you do in a non-conscious state. Now, as you continue to reincarnate, as you continue to have experiences, as you continue to remove well, you're basically uh, increasing in experience and learning and also advancing in enlightenment. You're removing veils. Or you're becoming more and more conscious of who you are, but you're also becoming very experientially rich while you're doing so. Now, as you continue doing that, each half will achieve a certain level, and this is every single soul on the planet will do exactly the same, and every single soul on every planet will do the same. So as these uh, half souls basically complete their enlightenment process where they have uh, basically dissolved all the veils and have reached uh, consciousness of source or source consciousness or at least the next level uh, where it no longer needs to incarnate, then the two halves of the souls, when they both did, and they, one could be finished way before the other, uh, in, in, in my particular experience, and when I say my, I'm only talking to the soul because Franco is just a physicality and a mind, no, no different than anyone else. Now, it has a little slightly different operating system because of the soul's way of tuning it, but at the same time, and I'm in a typical physicality as everyone else. Now, the soul itself, basically, at that point in time, some 200 plus years ago, had completed its enlightenment process, had recalled that its source and no longer required to take on a physical form. And even though the soul itself was not a, a, um, a designated uh, series of incarnation, meaning that it would only incarnate on various planets within a certain par parameter so that it would have a, a synchronized experience being that it would only incarnate in certain planets for a period of time. So for example, you go to one school until you're done with that school. So you would can reincarnate, say, on uh, planet Sirius or, or, or the Pleiadian planet or something of that nature, or you know, any of them, and you would stay there until you're ready to go and experience something else, and then you start another series of reincarnation on, on a different planet, say, say planet Earth. And in most cases, you stay within that series until you've achieved exactly what you needed to achieve. Now, the particular soul that's in my physicality at this point in time had, and if I'm talking about the last split, had chosen at this point in time not to, to create any consistency, and it was a, a what, what we can call a planet jumper or a multi-projector that it kept projecting itself in a holographic state in all different planets. Now, once the soul, the, the one half of the soul, I can't say because I'm, I'm not either half, but when the one half of the soul had completed, it basically no longer needed to incarnate. It went into a non-form state, remained in the non-form state, and uh, projected itself on other planets to get sort of a, a viewpoint or an expression or experience on different planets without taking a form but projecting a loose form. This is kind of a, um, a holographic state that does not take on the frequency of the particular planet. So you wouldn't see the projection in the same form as, uh, say, someone incarnating, because someone incarnating takes the full imprint and the full uh, holographic imprint would be exactly the same, and so that uh, others would be able to see them. So you're operating in a frequency that you would be almost invisible, but you would be able to be picked up anyone that was advanced that had a, a larger spectrum of viewpoint through their receptors or what we call perceptional state of seeing, and their, uh, whatever, I can't think of the word now. But anyways, so the soul did that part. But 54 years after the fact of the one half, the other half completed. And then once they were both in non-form, they united and became the two halves with the same identical signature uh, combined. So one half had 923 lives. The other half had 625 lives. They merged together. And they became one unified uh, soul on the first level. Then, of course, it belongs to a soul family. Now, the soul family has made quite a few, uh, quite a bit of advancement Meanwhile, so once the completion was occurred, then this, the, uh, the, the missing piece of the, the other uh, soul that was completing, which was the two halves that uh, were part of, of one experience, uh, united with the soul family. And basically, they were made up of 12 other souls that had all fragmented, so they were basically looking at 11. Let's call it that because that would be the, the, the one other one would be the 12. So when they united all together, uh, the, the clusters, so you had 24 half-souls, became 
12 whole souls with one oversoul in the center, which was the center core that held the consciousness of all combined. So all of those souls became one unit soul. So there was another unification that occurred. But it didn't stop there, and it went to the next level, which was the next cluster of 12 souls with one oversoul. And that completion that occurred there uh, also had the other that were completed, so it unified with those 12, and which were the split into uh, each half, so there was 24 there. So in total essence, uh, the soul that's in the, in the physicality that's operating as Franco at this point in time is a cluster of 48 or unified 48 um, fragmented souls that became one unit soul. Now, the the basically, so if we had to look at past lives, I mean, it becomes very colorful because you're talking about thousands and thousands of lives because you're streaming, you can stream all various um uh, different souls' uh, experiences if you have to look at. But in a sense, that is all like in this big library, a pool of resources, like a huge computer that's carrying all of that. But none of it actually uh, projects or carries, uh, you know, a, a prominent uh, or uh, a lead role in any of it because it all becomes that one. So it becomes one unit that moves uh, with with uh, the consciousness, the gathered, the collective consciousness of all these uh, 48 uh, souls that had taken on all these forms of incarnation on many, many planets and many, many time realms and dimensions and so forth, and, and it became unified. Now, because of its state, it has access to a higher consciousness, so it has a, access to source consciousness on a multitude of perspectives. Now, the, the, the reason the soul has decided to come back on the planet is because a soul that is in that state would not normally... Uh, in one way or another, choose to reincarnate because it basically would have to cover its, all its consciousness. So in that non-fragmented state, it really would have to create an alteration. So it would have to have a very specific purpose for it to, to choose another physical form. So that cluster of souls basically chose to come back to planet Earth at a time when there was a preparation for a transformation or a shift that's going on at this point in time to create and carry the energy, the consciousness, and so forth to facilitate within the, tra the transformation that is taking place. So it took on a body about 56 years ago, uh, back in 1957, and the body came through um, uh, a very specifically designed set of parents which would give the most extreme polarities in the sense of uh, when it comes to unconsciousness and density and so forth of uh, being really uh, in a non-conscious state to get a full experience of how it would be to be in that experience and to learn from uh, the human perspective at that level so that when you're coming through you have a, a great realization of where um, uh, some of the lower level forms of uh, projection and consciousness would be so that you would have an understanding of how humanity has to deal with whatever it's dealing through, what it's going through, but you also have access to all the other um, souls or what we call access to other levels of souls that are on the planet at this point in time. Now, you said how was I fortunate or anything. I had, it's really not a fortunate as the soul just chose to come back and it chose the physicality. The journey itself is uh, is uh, a very uh, interesting one because uh, you don't actually operate in the same physical form as uh, normally because there is the soul is not here to learn, it's not here to experience. It's basically yes, it learned in the sense of understanding and updating itself to to understand the human experience, but it's here to transform the human experience to transform the the, the, the planet. So it's doing work while utilizing a physical body and a mind, which needed to go through a lot of processes to allow certain energies to flow through and also maintain the hologram at a certain bandwidth so that I would be not disappear and at the same time be able to relate and to also be seen by others in an understanding level where you're you're not off the chart type of thing and you you're basically not uh, able to relate and create a, a change within themselves. So that's kind of giving you a little uh, understanding of that part of it. Now the work I do, of course. Um, is is uh, sharing consciousness it also has uh, you know a lot of work that i do behind the scenes which is operating in in the operating system of humanity and you know we can play with those details uh, if you choose to do so but let's go play with your questions and uh, we'll move on from there but i wanted to clarify that so i do have access if i choose to do so to full fully all lives but it's a complexity to see uh, thousands and thousands of lives and really you have to understand that most of these lives, unless there's something you can gain from, 
which really doesn't really matter because the the essence of what you've experienced, what you've learned in all of your incarnation is stored in the soul itself. So it's a huge, vast library. Because the thing is, the soul doesn't really concern about what, what role it played. If it was a king, it was this or was that or, or whatever it was or some, some other role that it may have played on other uh, planets. It doesn't really concern with that because those are the roles and costumes that it has taken on. So a hologram is a hologram and experience is an experience, but it's really the, the, the essence within that experience, the, what, what it was able to to learn from it and how it was able to utilize it as expansion. That is the part that really uh, matters. So it's really getting the, the lesson, if you want to call it that, just for lack of better words, rather than what did we do and didn't do. And that relates to what we're experiencing on the planet because at this point in time, yeah, we may be in a physical form, but the physical form really doesn't matter. And to the soul, it doesn't really matter what you do, don't do, or how you do it and so forth. It just really matters how you utilize that that journey to expand and grow and to create a shift within yourself and to advance the, the uh, collective consciousness uh, together. So that's really what it uh, puts its focus on. So you do have a navigator that is your soul that is going to you know, direct you through different paths. So at the mind level, you may desire something, but you're not getting it. Uh, it's not because the soul doesn't care for, for what you're going to get, but you know, it's basically, is it going to serve or not? And if it's not, then it will be delayed or not uh, put into place. Now, in many cases, when we have a certain desire that does not align with the soul, usually it's because of we're, we're asking for something that is not of a highest good in the sense of the direction that we're going, and it is in a level of consciousness that the, the soul doesn't want to reinforce so that by the time you get to another level of consciousness because you didn't get it or other experiences unfolded, your consciousness would have shifted. The, the desire of what you desired before would drastically change, if not completely uh, dissolved, because you are now in a different state of consciousness and you would not reflect that type of experience. Okay, I'll take it you're done talking there. By the way, you are actually audible about 25% of the time. The remaining 75% you're chopping up immensely. Just like what happened last week, I'll be giving Blog Talk Radio an earful about this. But anyhow, I guess we might as well move on. And by the way, uh, because I can't hear you, it's possible I may ask a question about something that you've already covered. If that's the case, well, just, I guess, summarize everything. But uh, I wanted to get into the subject of fourth dimensional Earth. Because I heard in your interviews with C.J. Miller, you were talking about Earth ascending into fourth dimensional density, and I believe you gave the date January 15th. That's kind of interesting because Alfred Weber, who I, I had on my show uh, a few weeks ago, he said that Andromeda Council contact Tolek told, well, his Andromeda Council contacts told Tolek, told Alfred Weber that as soon as the year turned over the course of the calendar flip from December 31st to January 1st, very beginning of January, is when the ascension into fourth dimensional density began. Now, to the best of your knowledge, could you please explain the, what the whole deal is with Earth, Mother Earth going into fourth dimensional density as a planet, and maybe also explain why it is that you are 15 days ahead of what Tolek said his contactees told him, and also get into why us humans are not fourth level density yet, to the point where we're made of more light and don't need to eat or uh, drink water to survive, don't need to have sex to reproduce, can survive um, through commerce and business without any money? I mean, can you answer all those questions? Well, we'll definitely play with it. I mean, there's the, the first level of clarification we need to bring in. There's fourth density, and then there's fourth dimension and fifth dimension. Now, we've had uh, the two things that aligned is basically we stepped into uh, the planet itself, has stepped in from a third density to a fourth density, but it also entered into the preliminary uh, programming of fourth, uh, fourth dimensional consciousness, meaning it starts to host uh, the, the vibration and frequency for us to experience fourth dimensional consciousness. Now, consciousness is a level of awareness and a level of expression and experience that we have. Now, the planet itself, it's the, the frequency continued to increase so that in essence, that as we went along, as we've gone through the uh, the transformation of uh, frequencies and so forth, to upgrade, to create the upgrade. So what's happened? The, the two things that occurred was that yes, the planet stepped into fourth dimensional fourth dimensional density, 
and then it entered into the codes and operating uh, preliminary operating is fourth dimensional consciousness. Now, there has been uh, one year of integration that has occurred with several, because there was four activation points along the way that actually stimulated uh, the rest of the codes to go into fourth dimensional consciousness. So around Jan between January 14th and 15th of, uh, of this year, the, the planet actually achieved full integration into fourth dimensional consciousness, which now is aligned fully with fourth density. Now, of course, as we continue moving forward, the plan uh, uh, that is now uh, set up is that by the time we get into uh, 2017, we will step into fifth dimensional consciousness when it comes to the planet. Now, the planet will still remain in fourth, fourth density, and that fourth density is undetermined how long that will be, and that can be hundreds of years or decades or thousands of years at this point in time, because that would take quite a bit of upgrading that would occur in that regard. So we're, we're, there's still a use for the planet to be in fourth density. However, the consciousness will shift into fifth dimensional consciousness. Uh, now, that's the entry point uh, at this point in time. So l l let me just clarify that part of it. As of 2015, uh, which is we're stepping into 2015, the, the planet ex actually steps into fifth dimensional consciousness as a preliminary start. So it starts to already emanate fourth, fifth dimensional consciousness frequency that will support anyone that's in fifth dimensional consciousness. And there's an, a year of integration, so when we're stepping into 2016, the planet itself will be uh, integrated itself into fifth dimensional consciousness. However, um, not until 2017 that the mandate, in uh, the way it stands right now, that every single soul should be, or close to every single soul, should be into fifth dimensional consciousness. Now, let's go back a little bit here. So right now the planet is integrated in fourth dimensional consciousness. Humanity is still at third, fourth, and fifth. Now... That is a consciousness level. Now, the consciousness meaning that you're accessing a higher aspect of yourself. So you, from a third dimensional consciousness where you are just a physical form having uh, physical experiences and you see everything as uh, rigid and you're still caught up in emotions and you're still caught up in, in the sense of uh, things have to be done a certain way, for example, uh, giving power to fear, uh, feeling disempowered, requiring that we need to earn and that we need to exchange or that we you know, need to survive that we are all separate and all of that stuff, that's in a third dimensional consciousness. When you're stepping into fourth dimensional consciousness, which uh, approximately about 24-25% of the souls have already started to step into fourth dimensional consciousness and may have the opportunity to step back and forth from third to fourth while it's completing its journey. But the souls that are in third dimensional consciousness are being pushed right now harder and harder uh, because their soul wants to really uh, lock into that higher level of consciousness. Now, as we continue to move forward this year, the push is to have as many souls as possible to shift into a fourth dimensional consciousness because once the planet shifts into the fifth, you would need to at least be in the entry point of fourth to be able to function. Now, you may be able to push the envelope and go a little further, but not by far. So there's a difference between the two. I mean, the... The fourth density is the actual platform that the uh, the planet itself operates in itself. So that's a very different experience than what uh, consciousness is. So you can have fourth density with a multitude of different consciousness uh, being expressed on the same planet. And, and uh, so the form of the planet changes. Now, when you're talking about going into a uh, physicality where the body will actually be restored itself back to utilizing uh, using energy from its environment, being the sun, air, water, and without having to eat food and and uh, go through all the different motions that we go through right now, that's coming down the road. That That is still a transformation that we are doing. Now, we used to have that capability just before 10,000 years ago, but that was changed with uh, with a change of platform, change of codes that came along, we had a visitors that has come in and played the uh, adjusted the role, adjusted the operating system, and also adjusted the humans operating system. So what we're doing is we're going back to that capability plus the advanced capability at this point that we have now. So that's what's kind of uh, happening with the fourth and fifth dimensional consciousness. So we need to understand it's the consciousness that shifts. Now, as the consciousness shifts, 
the vibration and frequency uh, shifts as a collective, and of course our environment starts to change. All the systems that have been created in the 3D world of sacrifice, suffer, or struggle, or that we have to have separation or anything of that nature will not stay intact because you start to see that, you know, if you have a banking system that basically dictates that you now have to... Um, you know, uh, borrow money that uh, they have and no one else has, or the fact that you're you're worth zero, and then uh, you have to kind of work or do something of some sort to create any form of value. Uh, that is a mentality when the separation thing was put into code, and where when everything was uh, polarized and also created an environment where you weren't able to access our true essence, because in essence, you are fully the value of everything that is, and that's sense is that the moment you step on the planet, you have access to anything and everything on the planet to the same degree as every single soul on the planet, and there's nothing uh, that is controlled, uh, owned, or anything of that nature by any particular individual. That was kind of put into the program afterwards. So as we're shifting into fifth dimensional consciousness, then of course anything, or even in fourth right now, that's why everything is being challenged, is that when we're shifting to fifth dimensional consciousness, none of that consciousness of that was created or anything that was created in the consciousness of third dimensional consciousness, which basically is, you know, we have all these structures, all these systems uh, that we need to go to work, we need to earn, we need to, uh, you know, uh, have somebody else have authority over us and all of these or create these rules or anything of that nature will not, no longer apply. And in essence, you get to the, the point where somebody says, oh, we, you know, this belongs to this and that, and you say, you know, you, you may be looking at them and just smiling because you, you know that that's not so at all because in your true essence, you know you're part of everything and everything is part of you. Plus, you also connect with one another at a level uh, where we've always been connected. We're obvious one, but we have become consciously connected where we now exchange with each other our own particular experiences and we also connect with everything around us. So it's, it creates a very, very different environment when you're going into that. So stepping into it, it's up to us at this point in time how quickly we move forward. Now, as you can notice, that there's a huge, huge uh, uh, push and uh, intensification of polarities playing out at this time. And the polarities are really at this point to, uh, you know, even the ones that are playing the what you call the negative roles or the dark roles or any of that nature, has all been pushed to the max at this point in time. So we get our fill of it. We get all the work that we need to get done in the polarized world or the experiences that we wanted to gain and move forward from, from the polarized experiences being pushed to the max so that we can actually get it done very quickly. And you'll notice that things are changing very quickly and it's changing for us very quickly so that even the events that we create, the time delay, and even though there is no time, but the, the frequency changes to create the illusion of time or that we've referred as time, uh, the events are happening uh, very close to each other in the sense to the fact that you're stepping in, in and out, in and out, and it's like you're 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 surfing the channels and you're getting a, an idea of everything and you're experiencing it, but you're not going linger through it and and watch the whole romance. You're just going to get bits and pieces of it, experience where you need to go, and then next, 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 and and you just move that way. So that is kind of what's happening. So if you look at some of the things that are playing out regarding uh, governmental or anything of that nature where they are acting out in certain roles or doing certain, uh, you know, false flags events or, you know, even the, 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 the choices that they're making or the, the way that they're projecting themselves in a sense, uh, you'll see that it becomes much more obvious that uh, in a sense that it is something that is pushed and it is not real, you know, in in a sense. So if uh, if uh, certain presidents or prime ministers or anything make start making rules or start, you know, making decisions or acting out in a certain way with all their different uh, cabinet members or whoever else is involved, you'll notice that they become so sloppy, so uh, in a way that you're looking at it and and you almost come to the point, why are we even listening to this uh, person? Well, the purpose of that is to actually awaken us, is for us to see that, you know, that that is not so, and we don't need to play in that form any longer so that we can actually self-empower and, and choose to collectively create an environment together that we want to, to experience rather than, you know, have a, a dictatorship or anything of that nature, which was, again, a polarized experience, which was a separation experience that was in part of our third dimensional consciousness, but in fourth and fifth, that is. Now, in fourth, of course, you see the changes are occurring in the sense everything is being rocked, everything is being, uh, uh, you know, uh, discovered, uh, uh, uncovered, and, and so forth. 
But at the same time, a lot of it is still intact because there's still a lot of people playing in third dimensional consciousness. And there's a lot of people still relying on that that duality, that uh, dense energies, and, and also the roles that they are playing. So this is your reason, because the moment that the, we reach a critical mass where the, uh, the energies and the requirements for the souls are no longer uh, required for us to, to grow within that polarity, then all of that will collapse very easily. And it will not collapse in a sense where you have to riot or have a fight or we, you know, we, we have to challenge the system. The challenge itself will become obsolete so quickly that people will not have any desire to even support it or even be part of it. And, of course, every, everything dissolves because even the idea, the false ideas that you know, people have power over you, for example, you, know, you put a president in place or some governor or something of that nature, the queen, the king, whatever you want to call it, and you put them in power. In actual fact, that's just an illusionary uh, thing that was put in place while we were playing the hierarchy and all the other parts of the game. But in essence, no one had power over anyone else. Everybody is equal to everyone else. So in essence, somebody t- turns around and says, well, I make the decisions. You have to do what you need to do. It's up to you if you want to participate. But if everybody says, no, not really. We're not interested in playing in any of that. So see you later. You're, you go home and go uh, play like one of us, and, and that's it. But it's all done in a way where there is not that fear or that anger or judgment because you have to understand there's nothing to judge. We're all playing roles and each and every role, doesn't matter how dark these roles are, are still serving us and and in one way or another accentuating the polarity so we can get done with the polarity. So you can turn around and say, well, somebody that's playing a a dark role is really playing with light or is of light. Well, in a sense, they're playing a dark role, absolutely, but everybody is from light, and if you even have to talk, call light, but from source is really the truth. Uh, everybody is from source, everybody's playing a specific role, and everybody's participating in, in, in the dance so that we can all move forward. Now, yes, if you look at it, their energy and what the choices they're making, yeah, they're, they're very un, in an unconscious state. But the soul itself has said, okay, we'll, we'll take an unconscious state for this point so that we can awaken and assist all the other souls around us. Now, are they you know, coming from a high vibration? No, they're coming from a low vibration. But at the same time, that low vibration is assisting the high vibration. So anyways, that's kind of a, 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 a touch with that uh, in regards to what's happening in uh, third, fourth, and fifth, and also what's relating on the planet accordingly. Okay, thanks for covering that. Uh, by the way, if anybody wants to call in, uh, please do. Uh, call in number 646-478-4747. Again, that's 646-478-4747. If you call in, I'll let you on right away. I'm not going to wait till a specific time. We'll just take callers as you call in. So, uh, But moving on to another subject here. Uh, you mentioned 2017 as the time of a consciousness shift. Uh that does jive with a couple of other people. David Icke uh, said that late 2016 would be the time he expects a huge consciousness shift. And during my interview with Alfred Weber, he talked about how benevolent ETs are abducting people. And I use abducting in a non-malevolent way, by the way. And they're taking them up to the ships. And I think these are crystal children in particular of sorts that are being abducted. And they're uh, checking around with the crystal children and and whatnot to prepare for the consciousness shift that's supposed to happen in 2017. Uh, forgive me if you already covered this, but have you heard anything about benevolent extraterrestrials um, abducting uh, like indigo and crystal children and um, tampering with their souls to prepare for the consciousness shift that you said is going to happen around 2017? Well, I mean, there is uh, some connections or some, uh, you know, because again, you need to understand one thing. Uh, as much as we call it abduction, uh, at a level, a soul level, of the ones that are being abducted, but in a sense they're not, they're actually volunteering to be part of uh, a discovery and ex- exploration part of it. What, what really happens is, uh, in a sense, is that the souls that, are, that, and we'll use abducting because that's the word that you're familiar with, uh, that get adopted, abducted uh, are basically souls that have chosen to be part of that crystalline light or whatever light that they're emanating to be in the vicinity of the souls that are still uh, projecting a lower vibration or lower state of consciousness and so forth. So now what really takes place is a, it's more of a discovery. It's, 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 a, it's actually, if you want to call it an experiment, but it's not really an experiment. It's an observation where they come in in contact and they observe 
uh, how this particular soul is able to, uh, uh, able to project this type of frequency and be able to function on a planet that is uh, vibrating a very still a very low, but at the same time to see how they can actually see the opportunity for them to shift because in most of the, most of the ones that you call benevolent are uh, basically uh, souls that are trapped in a physicality that are um, you know have been modified they're they're a, a hybrid uh, ge- genetically if you want to call it that uh, hybridized to to have a certain experience so in a way it is uh, restricted in its form so it actually uh, limits the range that it can operate so that it can uh, play a very uh, dense, dark role. Now, is it happening to the mass that uh, people like to project it? No, it's not. And the few that it is occurring, uh, it is a mutual dance uh, where it's uh, facilitating each other. So, uh, And at the same time, we have to, have to understand the ones that have come on here, the, 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 the beings that are on the planet that are still operating in uh, of a lower interest uh, which we refer as lower interest for the for the greater good at this point in time. Uh, they're they're the ones that have been here for a while, and they've been actually pairing or per, per playing out the um, the uh, how can I call it the polarized aspect of it, having that uh, dark density to for us to to rise and grow, uh, you know, beyond that. So they've been here playing a certain role now. Are we having others coming onto the planet? No, we're not. Uh, that has changed, and there was no additions uh, required. So it's only basically the ones that are still here that are playing the role. And yes, they may be connected. Some of them are connected with the government, and some others are connected now. If they're moving in and out, they're not leaving uh, too far f- from the vicinity because if they do, they are not able to re-enter anyways because that there is kind of a... Uh, a modification required so that uh, those energies are not allowed to come back onto the planet. So in essence, uh, they, they do move around, but at the same time, um, they're also being disempowered in a sense where their operating system will not function so well. Because you have to understand, for anyone to maintain a, a lower vibrating energy, they have to have uh, a reflective energy uh, to feed off it, if you want to call it that, but to, to support their energy. So a certain band of frequency, if it's not there, it's hard for them to, to function within it. So right now, I mean, as much as they're playing a role with the different control structures being on all levels at this, to create fear, to create uh, you know survival struggle and so forth, which is very low frequency, uh, and that's what supports them to stay there. But there's a, a twist to that or the backside of that, and that is by doing so, uh, by maintaining that, it actually allows all the other souls to complete their journey in going through the polarized and having the dark and light and all that other stuff being in as part of its uh, experience so that it can continue to move forward. So in essence, it's everything is of service regardless. It doesn't matter. So is there you know, an abduction against the will? It may be to the will of the mind, ego mind of some sort, but not the will of the soul. Because the soul, if the soul says we're not going to participate, it will not participate it doesn't matter not the way it's designed is that there's no souls that can uh, affect another soul it has to be mutually agreed at all times and most people don't understand that because they're looking at how the mind will respond or they're using a filter in a sense where you know because you have to understand a lot of times we get input from other resources that you know claims are coming from other uh, channeled in, uh, information from other sources but you have to understand that when you're when you're channeling other beings, you have to understand these beings may be slightly in a different timeline, maybe looking at um, also coming in from a different level of consciousness. And of course, if they're in, still in physical form and projecting, you understand that they're still on the process of, uh, of achieving consciousness. So uh, they may have a different experience, may have a different viewpoint. There may be things of value. Of course, there's always something of value, even if it's absolutely uh, opposite, because there's always a learning experience from it. But even if that is shared at this point in time, you have to understand you can't take everything exactly to the T because you're coming from a point. Now, there are teams that are working together to create changes on the planet, so they're usually communicating. But even then, uh, even the ones, the teams that I've been on, uh, you know, everything is, you know, trial and error type of thing, if you want to call it that, because there is no trial, there is no trial and error. You just 
project one stream and see what the outcomes are and, and then choose to see which uh, which one actually would best suit. So that's kind of uh, what's happening. Now, so in response to that, uh, I mean, it's uh, whatever little bit of it that is occurring, uh, it is not to uh, dwarf as much as it may seem that way to draw for the the awakening process, the the shifting in consciousness that's happening on the planet, it's not. There, there's nothing that's really going to dwarf it. It may intensify certain experiences. It may uh, accelerate the fact because, especially if dark stuff comes in, like even if you had the um, you know all of a sudden martial law came along and so forth of that nature. Now again, even something of that nature would only play out to the degree that humanity would be pushed to the max where they finally say, enough, we're not, we're not binding to this. And even the ones that are soldiers and so forth that have been brainwashed and, and are playing the, uh, playing the role, because you have to understand the, 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 the rules may come from higher up, but it's all uh, individuals like us that are choosing to participate to, to, um, you know, to take on the role and, and be the, the ones that uh, is enforcing uh, the various, uh, various rules. But the, again, it comes to the state of consciousness and the shifting that occurs that even the ones that would be in a uh, locked up state where it's uh, enforcing the rules will come to a level of consciousness and saying, what am I doing here? I am, whatever I'm doing here, I'm actually creating an environment that I'm living in too. And does this resonate with me? Does it feel good for me to, to, to continue to do this? Because it affects me directly in a way also. So uh, at some point it says, no, I don't care what anybody says. We're going to now come together as a community, come together as uh, as a oneness consciousness and decide how we're going to create our new world rather than, you know, coming in and saying, well, uh, you know, the president or the military or whoever, some general said that, you know, we have to, uh, you know, create this martial law or anything of that nature. Uh, you know, as much as it will come about, if it's necessary and beneficial, which we uh, is nothing is determined at this point in time. It will only be temporarily. If so, and if not, it won't. To the degree uh, intensity for people to finally say enough. And it's not a rebellious way. It's just basically says, no. We're not accepting this, and that will cause a beautiful, powerful wave to to shift uh, multitudes of consciousness at the same time, and basically go down a different path altogether. Okay, thanks. Um, I want to talk about the subject of time for a moment, because in that interview that Greg Prescott, Greg, Greg Prescott on In5D Radio uh, did with Jim Sell, uh, Jim made a very interesting comment about time, that in this 3D reality, time is, uh, excuse me, present time is reactionary. Whatever you do in the present is a reaction to something that happened in the past, Unless, uh, or maybe in the future, if you're talking about time travel in a sense. But one thing I'm, I really want to get into this is, can you, to the best of your ability, explain how someone who, an extraterrestrial entity who sees time as a complete and total illusion, would feel like that? I'm sure it's hard to describe because we're trapped in this matrix, so it's kind of hard to adequately imagine that. But also, in addition to that, Jim also made another statement about how time is necessarily so much speeding up as much as it is becoming more compressed, there is a difference. Like you walk to work, it takes five minutes to walk to work. And over the course of time, you will notice that the amount of time it seemed to take to get to work was less, even though it was always five minutes. And it was because not because time is speeding up, but because it was compressed. So can you discuss that? And also in, in the process of discussing that, also discuss how would a, a higher dimensional ET um, perceive time as an illusion? Well, uh, okay, so really time doesn't really exist. Time is something that we are using in the 3D world. Um, in a sense, really what we've done is we put a, a, a measure so that we can refer it uh, to it uh, to our mind uh, in a sense. Really it, what you're doing is monitoring changes in frequency and changes in, um, in, in consciousness that's occurring so that... Uh, because there's there's constant change occurring, uh, we've basically uh, there's a movement and and realignments always causing uh, uh, creating uh, sorry taking place, and uh, so we've decided to put some time uh, allowed into it, and of course we put a calendar and so forth so that we have something of reference. Now, 
the reason that things are, seem like it's speeding up, it's really, you can call it compressed or whatever it is, what it really means is that the, the, the variation of change has, has increased. That means things are changing a lot quicker. That means that what would have taken, um, and I have to refer back because we we're still in the 3D sort of holding on to a relationship of language uh, of time, what would have taken, like you said, 10 minutes before to experience in that difference, you now can experience it in less than half the time. You're basically looking at uh, a fraction of the time of before because what's happening is that you're having things happening back to back very quickly. So as you say, for example, you're walking to work in the five minutes. So what would, you would have walked in five minutes, you would have had a certain level of thought and, and aha moments and realizations and changes within yourself, uh, which would have taken, say, five minutes. And maybe in that five minutes, very little would have been adopted in, in, in any changes on yourself or actually in taking some of that, uh, that higher consciousness coming through or streaming of information and so forth. But now what's happening is because of the fact that everything is condensed, uh, compressed, or, or speeded up, because we call it speeded up because it looks that way, it feels that way, is that in that same five minutes, even though it's measured different, well, we still have a clock that says five minutes or whatever it is, but now there's so much more changes that have occurred within the five minutes. And in essence, you're, you're basically compressing all your experiences. So the experiences are all lined up. For example, and I'll, I'll relate this back to time, uh, whenever we had an experience before, say you had a traumatic little experience that would trigger you and you have some buttons pushed and you would have a re reactive response or you would go into a default uh, response of some sort and say that it would have caused a, a change within you being that you would emotionally react or anything of that nature, it would take you a certain period of time for you to, in one way, to recover from that. And when I mean recover is to get back into that old balance point that you were before. And say it would take, you know, you would have an event and then you wouldn't have anything for five, six weeks, ten weeks, a month, a year later. Now, the way things are working right now, with, this, with time being compressed, and really it's not time, it's change, all the events are being compressed so that everything is close together. So say you would have had that traumatic experience, whatever it is, uh, it does not give you five, you know, five months, six months, a year before the next one comes in, you're barely lucky if you're going to get hours, days, minutes, or seconds at times before something else lines up. And the purpose for that is to expedite the changes within yourself. So it's really uh, getting you to wrap up everything that you need to do in a very concise uh, manner to maintain the pace of the change that's occurring. So that means as the vibrations are increasing, as the planet is moving into a different dimensional frequency to support our new state of being, that whatever you had time, for example, if you had assignments to do and you were now given you know, uh, a week or two to get these assignments, now these assignments are done uh, have to be done in days or even hours sometimes. And uh, not only done that, you have more next assignment, next assignment, next assignment, and they all are coming in. I'm just using that as an analogy so that you can actually get more done in a short period of time. So the whatever is required, whatever the soul needs to project and create as a reality and experience within yourself, now is created so close together that you, you, it's not like you take a step and then you can uh, simulate it and, and um, allow it to integrate and so forth, and then you go for the next step. So it's like this, I'm going to take this project, I'm going to do it, then I'm going to take a little holiday, or I'm just going to relax a little bit or whatever it is. But now it's no, you get, you get things one after the other. So you'll notice in the world that in your journey, in your experience, things are happening constantly and very, very, very quickly. Again, we're talking about time, but it really, in a sense, there's change happening one step after the next, the next, the next. So you may have a relationship. It comes along. You have the experience done. The relationship leaves. It's not any longer where there's all that delay. Uh, um, anything that comes in, go, comes in, goes out, comes in, goes out. In a sense, you're, you're, you're almost at the soul level. You won't even have patience, if you had to call it that for lack of better words, to be, be able to linger because you, you would feel the sense of urgency for change and you're also wanting to catch the crest of the wave so that you become part of that wave as you move forward. So in a sense, yeah, that's what, you know, we can call it compressed, we can call it that it's speeding up. We can call it whatever we want to call it. But what's happening is change. It's a, it's a cycle of change have, 
have now so closely compacted that they're one after the other. So we're uh, we're basically cramming down uh, as many experiences required for us to complete everything that is in the 3D world, complete as many things that would have been part of our experience in 4D world, but it's not only what completing in this lifetime, we're also completing at the soul level, basically all the lifetimes that we've had that we have not created completion, and all of it is being live streamed to this very point so that you can do everything so quickly and get it all wrapped up. So it's not about you know addressing one thing at a time, it's now... Uh, one back to back, back to back, and and also sometimes they overlay each other because one experience may enhance the other experience. So it's not going to wait for you to do complete one; it will just stack it on top of it because that one there will actually create enough intensity so that you can collapse both at the same time before you prepare for the next one, and the next one will just drop right in again. So that's really what's happening in that. Uh, I know people explain it in different forms, but it's really all the same thing. It's about how everything is being compressed, how everything is coming together a lot quicker to expedite uh, the changes. Because we're trying to catch the wave of all the energies. We want to be participating in this transformation. You have to understand the transformation that's occurring right now is highly induced by a large collective consciousness. And that is not our collective consciousness of planet Earth. It's the collective consciousness of our galaxy and universe. So it is. this is an upgrade that is happening on a massive ma- magnitude. So in a sense, we have chosen to be on this planet and also be part of this change and be also brought back into the same band uh, frequency that we would be with the rest of our brother sister soul planets because we've kind of been dropped off uh, off the radar type of thing but we are still part of that cluster so in a sense being off the radar is not going to is not conducive so it has to be brought back into the the galactic family if you want to call it and the universal family in a sense and not be left you know, to to our own uh, demise at this point in time, but to also be part of that. So we're being influenced in a sense, but influenced in a, in a way where it's uh, it's actually assisting us to um, by the, the 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 energies and frequencies, and also the the, uh, the 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 levels of consciousness coming from all our brothers and sisters souls from other planets, and also all the cluster planets that are are all directly involved with us. So there's there's all of that working on. So that kind of explains what that part is. Okay, thanks, Franco. By the way, we do have a caller, uh, JPM2806. I don't know who you are, but I'm going to let you on, by the way. Before I let you on, just so you know, you can't ask me any anything because I'm not going to be able to hear you because I'm breaking up immensely for some unknown blog talk radio glitch. But anyway, uh, JPM2806, you are on the air. Welcome. Uh, please introduce yourself by your name and what do you want have to say to Franco. Hello, JPM2806. You are on the air. Hi. Uh, sorry, I was muted. Can you listen to me? Okay. Actually, I, I can I hear can you. Hear I hope you won't break up. Yeah. Okay. And I can hear you both. Hopefully, you won't break up. But uh, uh, how you doing? What's your name? Yeah, I'm, I'm John. I'm calling from Spain. And uh, thank you for for the talk. It's very, very interesting. Um, I had a question, and uh, <clears throat> it's regarding the fact that uh, uh, it's, it's nice to listen to you, Franco, because uh, you, you explain the things very, very well, and uh, you, you turn a uh, voice is really, really smooth, and and, uh, and it, it gives a really nice uh, feeling. Uh, what I wanted to, to ask is that is there a way to to accelerate or or at least to protect uh, from uh, those uh, uh, low frequencies or those electromagnetic uh, waves that are stopping or preventing people from reaching uh, a higher state of being. Uh, or, or, or I would ask, uh, do the uh, organite uh, would help in, in protecting uh, from those uh, frequencies, uh, Franco? I think that's uh, the organizing uh, or, or do you the, the organite, uh, the organ, you know, the organ technology. Uh, oh, right, right. Yes, yes, yes. Well, at this point in time, um, the moment we, we say that we have to protect ourselves, then we find ourselves in a state where we are still open to for influence of all those energies. Uh, in a sense, what's happening 
um, whatever you're being experienced, whatever influences that you're that is occurring with you would only accentuate whatever state of consciousness that you're in, so that you can actually address any programs and anything that comes up. So the organite, if you want to look at it, may change the frequency so that you're not, um, you know, affected directly in a sense to the same degree. Uh, so that you know, if you utilized it around you, it would uh, would negate some of the frequencies coming through. It's a kind of a breather, but in a sense, really, what it, what's key here is to be in the exposure to to a degree, so that you can actually um, create a change within yourself. So, one of the things that you know. We talk about raising our frequencies and uh, to be out of the, 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 the bandwidth of where any of that stuff would affect you. So what occurs is that we already have a very high vibrating being. We're actually, our natural state is source consciousness and basically source uh, vibration, which is a full spectrum. And it is at such a level that really it, only, it can actually choose what it wants to experience at any point in time. It's not affected by anything. So it's never in a victim state per se or in a sense where I can be influenced. I can choose to tune into that, pick it up and utilize it as part of an experience. And that's what we're doing in essence. And, and then uh, uh, turn that off completely. It's like you, know, you go on the radio and you have a multitude of stations, even the same thing with the TV, you have a multitude of stations. Unless you tune in the dial to that particular station, you're not going to pick it up. But at the same time, in your living room or wherever you are, uh, there's all these frequencies coming in, and you have to actually tune into it. So it's the same thing. So in a sense, we're a very high vibrating being. But what's happening right now is that if you're affected, you're still uh, in a lower vibration uh, because you've lowered the vibration. Because well, we all done the same thing. We've lowered our vibration to have that experience. To, so basically, we dial the tune, uh, the the dial to to pick up a certain frequency so that we can experience everything that we can in that ex- frequency. And once we're done, we tune it up to the next level of frequency and then we have experiences and and we go on and on and we keep going from one level to the next level to the next level so right now at this point in time everything that is being projected even with the cellular and 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 so forth that uh, all these frequencies that are coming in there that do in a way affect the physicality to some degree will only uh, affect us in a certain uh, a certain uh, wavelength certain band that we're in so for us to raise our frequency is really, at this point in time, work on yourself in the sense of getting rid of all the programs that affect you. For example, anything that defines you, any programs that have created some form of pattern within yourself. For example, if something happens around you, you're, say that you're sensitive to certain things around you, being uh, you know somebody reacts or something like that, or you feel judgmental or you feel any of that nature. Those are programs that will actually keep your frequency lower. Now, there's a purpose with that. The purpose of that lower frequency is to keep you in that band for a period of time until you're absolutely done with everything that you need to do. So that if you need to learn, because a lot of people say, well, you know, we have to change our frequency, which is true because if the, the frequency will change as we complete the different levels. So the, the, the purpose here is not to get caught up in, in the fact that we need to protect ourselves because then that still keeps us in that band. It is to be open to whatever the experience is, see how it affects us, and, may, and see all the different programs and different stories and different things that come up that trigger us to remain in that. So, for example, if you have certain things that create uh, traumatic experiences or, tra- or react as uh, anger, or judgment, or anything of that nature, or you're you know, judging others or seeing right or wrong, good or bad, or anything of that nature, or feeling bad about whatever is going on, then those are programs. Those are actual responses because who you truly are doesn't, doesn't you know, relate to any of that at all. So those are all programs that actually keep you in that same band of frequency that would affect you. So as you get those things done, as you wrap them up, you you clear those off and you now see that you no longer need to be there. Then once you're done in that band of frequency, you move up to the next level and everything that's, you know, the radio waves, everything else that is coming through uh, that would normally keep you in that low uh, frequency will no longer affect you. So you actually go to a frequency that even organite will not even... uh, be useful because that band, even if it's coming there, you're not tuned in that level to even pick it up, so you're not affected uh, regardless. So, for example, if you're, you know, if somebody uh, is uh, seeing a situation, for example, they discover that uh, the government's doing such and such and so forth. Now, in a sense, the fact that you've discovered and the fact that you're open enough to to see that 
you've already now raised your consciousness and you're now seeing it. But the automatic default in most cases, because you're still dealing with that, would be get angry or to to feel victimized or feel that, you know, they, they, they're the demons and they're causing all that. So those are still programs, those are still judgment, and, and you're not seeing the true picture of it yet. So now you need to go beyond that because once you get to a level of consciousness where you no longer have any reactive mode, you will see the big picture and say, oh, okay, they're all playing a role. They're all part of me. They're all a facet of myself. We're all playing together. They're just playing that role there so that everybody that needs to be in that band is done, and then we can move forward. Now, the energies of the planet, remember, is at the same time is very increase, increasing. The sun that's beaming down on us is also increasing in the vibration that it's streaming down. So in essence, everything is right now uh, negating uh, so that the impact of everything that we've been exposed to that is supposed to lower our frequency uh, becomes less and less impactful at this point in time for everybody in, in general, but more and more for others anyways, because it uh, actually creates a, an opening within it. So it actually alters the intensity that it would there. Now, but if somebody's still in a very, you know, uh, 3D state and, and responding in that way, then, of course, they'll be affected more than, uh, than someone else. But that's only to keep you there only for the time until you get get done and move move on. So it's like going to school. And if, right. Once upon a time, they used to hold you back. You know, if you if you don't graduate or you, you say you're in grade three and you don't you know get good marks and everything, you can't go to grade four. They hold you back into grade three. It's the same thing. Uh, um, they don't do that really that much anymore. Uh, but at the same time, so uh, if you're if you're in grade three and uh, you're still, you know, haven't finished all your subjects and you haven't qualified for it, then you won't move forward. But once you've done that, that's it. So the teachers will still be there for grade three until... I get the message, Franco. Uh, mm -hmm. th thank you. And, and, and I wasn't thinking um, uh, personally uh, for, for myself. I, I was thinking more... Uh, about uh, the people uh, that were that are around me, and, and particularly because uh, ne nearby, uh, I have observed that there are a few uh, um, antennas, and uh, and also many people getting sick with uh, with cancer. Mm -hmm. And then I thought that uh, if uh, if I could uh, somehow uh, get some organites uh, all around the, the village, uh, let's say, and uh, and uh, that was in, in this pers perspective, perspective that I was asking the, the question. And I understand that uh, if, if uh, one, once, uh, one can um, uh, increase uh, his vibration, it will be uh, over that, that, that thing. But, uh, but uh, m m many, many people around me are still uh, how would I say, uh, in, in a 3D uh, complete uh, way of living? Yes, yes. And the, the thing is, it it's applies for them too because all of them will, uh, will still be affected to the degree they need to. For example, even the cancer part. You have to understand like something like cancer would only be triggered if uh, it's an experience they need. The soul requires that as a wake-up call or, or to, you know, to utilize as a, as a uh, checkout point. Now, if you feel guided and the people want to work together to uh, offset the frequency that's coming in to create some breathing room for, for being affected by it then, and you come together as the community as an agreement to, to put the organite around so that you can uh, reduce the effect of that, then that's fine as long as you feel guided to, to, to do it. But to rely on that to uh, alter the uh, experience so uh, then... You have to understand the people that are still in 3D. Um, their their mandate is also to go into fourth fourth dimensional consciousness at least, and uh, so they they either make the shift, utilizing whatever everything that's coming, or in a sense they they will choose to to depart in in the physical form or or you know at least the soul level to do so. But uh, if you feel guided to do that and it feels because it does it does assist. But uh, at the same time, it would be, you know, if, it, if it's even a breathing room, it, it will be affected by something else uh, that uh, at this point uh, would still require to create an intensity for them to move forward. It's like the environment is there because if the, the, the thing is if they don't need to be there, they would move. 
or right. that something else would change anyway. So agree. If you look at it, there's an agreement on a collective scale for for it to to be that way. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, it. It's a very good um, point. Uh, yes, and uh, and if if I may, um, could could you give you your point of view about uh, the the archons? Uh, have you have you are you aware of or? Uh, uh, the archons or, or this idea of uh, the Gnostic uh, tradition that talk uh, about the archons. Well, uh, which part? What are they? What are you referring to regarding the archons? Well, uh, about the fact that they um, they uh, they have uh, uh, usurpated or, or at least they they, they show off as a notoritarian uh, um, um, entity, and that's uh, that's how. We um, um, govern, or at least uh, manipulate it. Uh, uh, actually, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, they've come to play a role. They, I mean, they they have played a role in when this whole uh, idea uh, came along with the the fact of. I mean, there's there there has been a lot of influences to uh, that have con created these hierarchies and so forth where they have been governing and, and trying to create a certain environment on the planet so that we would uh, you know uh, have a, a very intense intense experience but the control that they have or have had and have the relationships they've had with uh, other uh, other members on on the planet uh, that are in human form at this point in time uh, their 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 um, their role is coming uh, very quickly to an end. So, because the thing is, with the adjustments and the, the shifting in consciousness that's going on, uh, all the authoritative uh, stuff that was there, and also all the control structures that were in there uh, that were put in place, will will no longer be in effect because there won't be the participants that would want to allow that to to be. So, um, when we were in the state that we were before, and we're still in that state as a majority at the moment, still. Uh, then, yeah, they they have you know a certain level of power, if you want to call it that, or uh, influence. That's a better word uh, over what's uh, what's playing out. But even that, I mean, are they the overlords or anything of that nature? Uh, they may have played that role, but it doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't uh, apply in in a sense because their their roles are coming to an end, or, or even the, the the roles that they've uh, arranged with other. Humans that are hybrid humans that are on the planet at this point. Wow, f fantastic, uh, wonderful. Uh, I have a. You bring me another question. Is 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 the is the change uh, that uh, that uh, is uh, expected or is is coming uh, will will uh, will be more mediatic or televised or would it be more uh, something? That uh, will uh, be carried through the alternative news. Well, the alternative alternative news is already sharing a lot of the changes that are going on. Uh, the only thing is with the alternative news at this point in time, um, a majority of people that are still reporting it and so forth are still in the progress of awakening and still going through their you know the, the right, wrong, good, bad type scenario uh, experience. So a lot of times it's not it's the 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 reporting the information and may be a little bit uh, influenced by interpretation, influenced by their understanding, uh, because there is a lot of people that are reporting different things that are changing and even stuff that is being channeled by others, by other beings and so forth. Uh, we have to always understand that we you know we have to get to a source level of understanding before we can actually take anything because. All of it is, uh, you know, it's a lot of times it's filters. So we have a lot of belief systems, and sometimes we bring in some of the old, older belief systems, and then we kind of fill in the blanks. But as we move forward, um, it will become much clearer. There will be less confusion because the confusion right now is a good thing in a way because the confusion allows us to tune within ourselves and to use our own guidance system to see what relates with us and what doesn't relate with us so that we could still utilize part of it. But as we move forward, you'll notice that there will be a more consistent uh, and reliable 
uh, flow of information that will come that, uh, in a sense, will not be skewed, will not be filtered, will not be interpreted a certain way that, uh, based on the person that's interpreting it. And a lot of times the stuff that's channeled, again, is filtered. It's coming through uh, um, you know, beings that may not have had direct experience, maybe uh, watching. It's like somebody in a baseball game that really doesn't understand the baseball game completely, but they're watching the game from the audience and then telling the players what to do type of thing and uh, really the players are the ones that are playing on there and they have a good uh, a good idea of how it feels to play the role and what they need to do and not to do at this point in time an observer in one way is good because they can see some things that they can't see while they're right in in the midst of it but at the same time they have to also use their way of understanding uh, of how the game is played for them to 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 play it fully so this is how uh, the analogy would work. So when you're getting in- input from other sources, from, say, other beings from other planets or beings in non-form or anything of that nature, you know, the, you always have to use it and see how it actually relates and how it would benefit. Because even them looking at timelines, you have to understand, they may be on a different timeline and they may be looking at a, a parallel world, uh, which is one of the probabilities, because we have a multitude of probabilities. There really is no future, because the future has a multitude of, of projections, and it's really up to us to govern in the way that we, uh, the way we change and advance ourselves, to govern which parallel, parallel world or which, you know, which highest probability would actually uh, play out for us. So, um, in, in a sense, that's hopefully that I've explained that for you to bring some clarity. Yes, completely. Uh, when when I listen, I listen to you. It, it feels like uh, everything it, it's uh, quite all right, really, uh, and and that uh, the things are are, are happening uh, the way uh, they should. Yes, they are. They are, they are. I mean, not everything that's happening uh, is required to to work that way. But as long as we still need it as a collective, because you have to understand, everything is monitored as a collective. So. For example, we had a lot of things that were going to play out in a very intense way on on the planet. Uh, For example, we would have had much more natural, what we call disasters or intensities of weather patterns and so forth. I mean, we're already getting quite a bit, and and a lot of it is is being pushed. But at the same time, we would have had much more. We could have had nuclear uh, devastation. We could have had a lot of different intense, intense experiences that would have unfolded. However, as we are monitoring and, and moving along, we decide what we need and don't need. So a lot of things have changed, even though there was a lot of predictions uh, that were supposed to have played out, hasn't played out. Even, you know, the financial crashing and all that stuff, I mean, that was supposed to play out a long time ago. However, it, you know, it, it, it's delayed, and you can look at it and say, well, no, the government is delaying it, they're doing whatever it is. But in essence, we are collectively because we don't need that intensity. However, so as we, we go along, it's always perfect because we're still going to get to the outcome, and that is to come to a higher consciousness. So everybody's going to get the exact experience they need and nothing more because should there be something intense in a specific area, you will feel guided to leave that area because only the ones that need to be in that area will stay there, and the rest of them won't if that had to play out. But if you want to look at it, it's unfolding the way it needs to unfold. As much as it looks chaotic it's still a level of perfection because when you can look at it and say, yes, I could see why we needed that intensity, why this needed to play out because people were still asleep. It's, for example, even in your town, if everybody's in, uh, you know, still locked up in third-dimensional consciousness, we, you may have different experiences that will intensify so that they actually open their eyes and say, okay, let's take a look what's going on here. What are we doing not doing and what should we now participate together to, uh, to make changes and so that we don't have these intensities or these experiences or that we are affected by the way we were affected before. So, yes, things are following along. You know, if you feel or hear something where, uh, you know, uh, that devastating things are coming, we need to, to, to prepare and all of this stuff, this stuff, and if you feel guided to, to say, okay, I'll make some provision because I want to ride it through uh, without uh, going into fear, that's fine, but if uh, if you feel that hey, I don't need to, to have this experience, then you'll be guided to do something else. You will, and 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 it's just the case, right? So it's not uh, you know everything will play out the way it needs to play out for each and every soul the way they need to be, and you will be exactly where you need to be to have whatever experience you need. Now you also volunteer to be where you are to be the light 
if you want to call it that, I use that as loosely, to be the, the, the energy of consciousness within that area. So you're in your town, everybody else's most majority might be in 3D, but you're already in a fourth and fifth dimensional understanding and you're expanding and your energy is emanating. And because you're being yourself and the fact that you're in that place, it's creating uh, an, uh, another, you become another transmitter that's transmitting energy throughout the whole so it gives the opportunity for, yes, to be affected by the negative, but at the same time, uh, you're also projecting the opposite, which is a much more positive energy. And the positive energy is always much more powerful than the negative energy because the, the negative energy is a very uh, unorganized energy. It's very raw. It's very crude energy. And it's an energy that has, it's not organized. It's a separated, scattered energy where uh, a positive energy, a, a love energy, an energy of uh, of a higher consciousness is very fluid, very very powerful in a sense where it actually is organized. It uses the the, the core essence of source itself. In a sense, it, it streams that energy and it becomes very more powerful. So it neutralizes. So you being in a higher state of consciousness neutralizes the all the fear and energy uh, that the whole town may may have in a negative form, or at least uh, offset it quite a bit. Right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, briefly, could could you um, um, say something about the connection between the uh, the lucid dreaming or or the dreams and uh, and and then the the reality and the connection that there is uh, in between? Uh, uh, hold on. Before you get into that, I just want to say I do have another caller on the board, so this is going to be your last question. I do got to okay. have to get to this other caller. Thank you. I, I really appreciate the the, the conversation, and, and uh, thank you. I've been carrying out. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, regarding the, the 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 lucid dreaming of the dream state right now, the the dream state is a is a very very powerful tool that we're utilizing right now. And this is part of the compression that we were, I was talking about earlier before that uh, others have uh, have also explained. In what what we're doing is we're experiencing life in the awakened state in the in the what we call the the reality of uh, being in uh, the hologram of the physical form, but the changes even though it's very quickly is not as fluid yet. So we are using the dream state to actually experience what we can't experience in the awakened state. We call that awakened state because we're in in the physical form in a, a different reference point, but. What we're doing at this point in time is that we're using the, the 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 dream state to accentuate and express what we can't express, so that we can get more work done very quickly. Uh, we can raise our consciousness, but at the same time, be able to wrap up other experiences. So the the dream state, uh, you know, and, and a lot of times we bring into the etheric dreams, and in the etheric dreams, you're actually projecting yourself in a physical form, and while you're doing that, you you're you're able to have much more experiences are even faster and much more efficiently than you would be able because there's not the delay that you would have here. Now, sometimes the mind gets involved and creates a little bit of a delay, but usually that uh, that is usually resolved very quickly. So the dream state ha plays a very powerful role right now. Uh, it's always been there, but at, at this time it's actually accentuated. So you'll notice whatever you can't experience uh, in the waking state is now uh, produced in the dream state because it gives you an opportunity to get more done. Yes, uh, I, I have no, noticed that uh, recently in different experiences. I really appreciate uh, your time and uh, I know the meditation that you you, you put available on the internet and uh, and it's a, a great show. Thank you and uh, thank you for your time. Oh, you're welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Have a great night. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, I guess uh, is that the end of, okay. That's the end of that call. Thank you for yeah. hanging up. You made it clear that you were finished. Okay, yeah, I didn't hear a damn thing in that whole thing basically because it was all broken up. But uh, next caller is area code two one eight. Uh, area code two one eight. Uh, you are on the air. Uh, introduce yourself, where you're from, and what is your question for Franco? By the way, I'm willing to give you uh, fifteen minutes on the line. Not that you may need that all, but you have fifteen minutes if you want it. Unless another caller comes on. Thank you. My name is Dieter. I'm calling from Minnesota. And my question, my first question to you, Franco, is do you anticipate telepathic phenomenon to be so common that the mainstream media and other mainstream uh, cultural points such as churches, etc., will acknowledge it publicly That would be in the, in the next couple of years? Uh, that would be within, it'd be close to about three years. 
But in a sense, uh, at this point in time, uh, as we go along, as we're moving forward, uh, you have to understand a lot of the stuff, even like religions and so forth, the the power and the control that it had, the the influence that it had, the, the usefulness that people had. Hello? Hello? Okay. I'm not hearing. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can I? Is he asking me? Well, I I, I think I may have lost him. Or uh, we lost him. Uh, but I can uh, answer it anyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah he, maybe he'll call, and if he does, he's got another uh, 12 minutes or so before I'm, unless another caller comes in. But yeah, what was he asking? Please continue. Yeah, he was asking about uh, the, the, the way telepathically we would be able to communicate, so that in actual fact that uh, it would uh, it would uh, be uh, recognized through religion and mainstream, uh, well, I guess media and other forms at this point. So, in a sense, uh, yes, as we're moving forward, we're looking at uh, you know, in, in about uh, as we go along, it will become much more mainstream. Uh, a lot, but at the same time, the usefulness of all the different uh, institutions that are in place uh, will become um, redundant as we go along. Now, the actual being able to communicate and uh, to connect and be able to access uh, higher consciousness amongst each other or the sharing of consciousness among each other, that will be something progressive and that will be uh, more than uh, three years uh, along the way. Now, some souls are already... Uh, in physical form, able to to do more of it. Uh, it's still very um, um, limited in a way, but in in another way, it is uh, it is uh, expanding. So the the purpose of having uh, you know media or some other mediator to uh, to share consciousness or give directions and which way to go uh, within the three years time that will not be required. So in a sense that uh, by the time we're getting into the deeper end of 2017, uh, we should be in a point where we have all have higher access and the level of sharing with one another will have increased in some way. And then as we move forward, uh, then it will become much more mainstream as uh, as we um, continue to reactivate those those capabilities within ourselves because basically we are wired to be able to do that except that you know we've had most of it turned off when the modification is done so when it's the when we're rewiring and going through uh, a transformation within ourselves then that will be reactivated, uh, of course, and uh, the the same modality of communication will change. And, and the fact of having language barriers will, will no longer be uh, an issue because at this point in time, as we move forward, the, the communication will have no barriers because uh, the thought forms will be shared and will be understood exactly how it needs to be. And there's, so, there's, not, there's not even going to be the need of interpretation because right now, you may say a statement and everybody interprets it a different way based on their filters. Um, the filters will not become an issue at that point either as we move forward because the communication will be very clear and it would be understood and then utilized as uh, to enhance your own experience. So that's kind of what we're stepping into as we continue to move forward. So the, the biggest changes, I mean, the, the changes are occurring, but the biggest changes won't you know, occur until after 2017, because after 2017, not only the planet's in fifth dimensional consciousness, but the majority of the, the souls on the planet will be f fifth dimensional consciousness, if not almost all. And at that point in time, there's going to be a huge amount of progress, because uh, the level of communication, the level of consciousness amongst all of them will match with everything, and uh, of course, our world will start to change even quicker. Of course, there's going to be phases as we go along, uh, but at the same time, uh, there will be a lot more changes in that regard. Okay, thanks. Uh, by the way, Erica 218, I'm going to get you back on the air. By the way, I uh, actually got kicked offline for a moment, and that was the second time I was kicked offline on this show already. Fortunately, Franco was talking during that run, so if you guys don't hear me speaking, uh, just assume that I was kicked offline. This happened last week, so um, area code 218, you are on the air again. You have about uh, eight, nine minutes left uh, before I'm going to have to let you go to finish with Franco. Go ahead. Thank you. I was kicked off the air, but I heard most of it. 
I obviously noticed the escalation in toxicity, the escalation in manufacturer crises, and I'm assuming that that pattern will continue. My question is, uh, will the increased uh, awareness, the increased, we'll say, capability of the average human being uh, be able to handle that increased uh, toxicity better because of the increased energy in the planet? Uh, yes. What, what will happen is that um, the toxicity and everything else is, is, is basically just intensifying uh, the experiences that we're having. So it's actually compromising the physicality it's creating so that in, in a fact that it's uh, forcing the physicalities to get uh, to um, step out of the reliance of the frequency of the substance and, and other uh, environmental issues on the planet. So in actual fact, it will create its own resident energy, will be able to function its own resident energy. So no matter what it's exposed to, it will not be affected. Now, what happens is the effectiveness will remain to a certain degree for the souls that need it uh, as part of their experience. But what happens is once that all of that is shifted, in a sense, we are no longer require it, and everybody has their own resident energy that is uh, that is vibrating at a higher frequency. The toxicity, will, uh, the, what is considered toxicity, because it's only a wave pattern of frequency, will start to alter. So the the uh, the toxicity will no longer become toxic. It will actually turn into something that will benefit the planet, will nurture the planet in in a sense. So if you have uh, poisoned water, toxic water. Uh, and, and, I, and there's already been scientists that have proven it uh, by sending certain energy to, to the water. You actually can change the, the, the level of pollution to, to make it clean again. So what would happen is a lot of the environmental damage and what we've created as levels of toxicity, because the level of toxicity is, is intense right now. I mean, there's nothing that's clean. It doesn't matter what you do at this point in time that is not exposed in one way or another. But it's also... Uh, allowing us to tap into our own energy generation, and that energy generation will be much more clean stream coming from a higher consciousness, higher coming coming from a higher spectrum of light or higher spectrum of of energy and vibration, so that it will be fueled by that and not by the environmental. Uh, but at the same time, because of the increasing uh, frequency of the planet it is actually dwarfing and changing because even the, the, the nuclear release, release in Fukushima, uh, in actual fact, I know there's a lot of uh, information being shared that it's something devastating, which in a sense, yes, if you had to look at the density and toxicity and all that stuff, uh, if you're exposed to a high dosage, yes. But at the same time, uh, the nature itself, everything around it is actually uh, changing it uh, so that it is not going to be so damaging. Uh, in a sense, but eventually it will neutralize because a lot of it is neutralizing already. Uh, if that is not reported, and I know they're using certain uh, measures, um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, meters and so forth to measure it, but what they're picking up is not really uh, accurate in a sense of what it actually refers to how we respond to it in our physicality. Because Chernova, if you look back at uh, the instance there, they're having new life forms and they're creating a lot of different things because the energies have changed there. So in essence, yes, a lot of this will change as we as we go along. And our how about manufacture? I'm sorry, then how about manufactured uh, food shortages? And maybe you can comment on toxic snow. I've seen so many videos on toxic snow, and uh, uh, even containing various nanoparticles, chemtrail particles, and certain kind of uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I remember the term, but some kind of uh, plastic uh, uh, particles that that make the the melting of the snow change in a, in a sense. Have you heard of that? Uh, yes, I have. I have. Uh, yeah, that takes a little bit of, uh, to explain, but I'll go f through it very quickly. The manufactured toxic foods and so forth right now, again, at the same time, is uh, as the, the consciousness and realization of what we're doing and how we're doing it, and we start to reconnect at the fact that whatever we're doing, we're creating a, an environment that we need to live in, uh, you'll notice that uh, there will be a much more conscious awareness in the sense of what we're doing and how we're doing it. So that will change uh, so that we are not going to be, you know, promoting genetically modified food that is designed to, to compromise physicalities or, or any drugs, medications, or anything of that nature that will compromise the physicality or in any sense uh, creating any forms of toxicity in, in whatever's 
put onto the food and and so forth. Now, regarding the snow, uh, yes, there's been so much chemtrails put on, and the chemtrails do carry a lot of uh, toxic uh, chemicals in it, but they, they've also been putting other particles in so that it would actually, uh, it, again, the, the, the consciousness involved in how they're doing this uh, is, is somewhat, if you had to look at it, insane, but at the same time, you know, it's it's still creating an environment where, you know, it's still conducive in one way or another. So it doesn't have plastic filings and, and so forth in it. It does have different forms of chemicals and reactions of chemicals, which once uh, combined, exposed, do, um, do create uh, plastic-like snow. Is it snow? Uh, well, it depends what you call snow. If you're talking snow that's made 100% with water or at least a water hybrid of water and air, uh, no, it doesn't because it does carry a lot more chemicals in it and a lot more. Uh, and I know they talk about nanoparticles and so forth, but even the nanoparticles that uh, they're talking about is really not nanoparticles because uh, the, it does exist, but they're not putting it in uh, in that uh, sense at this point in time. However, a lot of the chemicals in there are not environmentally friendly and are not uh, beneficial. But at the same time, uh, you know, there has to come to a realization in which we're going to get to where we're going to see the insanity, if you want to call it that, for lack of better words right now, using that as a reference point, that we don't need to do this any longer. And we don't need to continue playing the game that we're playing with the whole idea that, you know, we're trying to save the planet from global warming, which is not true either. So, uh, I mean, a lot of this uh, will change as we go along. Now, for people to, to recognize this and make everybody aware of it, in a sense, as long as we're not going into fear and coming to the realization, will be more and more people get conscious and say, okay, what are we doing? Let's step up and, uh, you know, let's ask for this to stop. Not only ask it, but not even support it. And if we have to do take any steps, uh, you know, and not in an, in an angry way, but in a way where we take uh, progressive steps, then we will. Really Thank you, uh, Frankel. Uh, I have one more question, perhaps. Uh, do you see any uh, possibilities of a 9-11 truth movement uh, awakening up the average person? Well, you know, there's so much information already about uh, 9-11 uh, and what's happened. And, uh, there is, but it hasn't really uh, uh, filtered down to the average person. In fact, most people still resist it. I, I have talked to uh, lots of people, and you know, it's a stereotype response that I get, which is, uh, "Don't ask, don't tell." Uh, just not any curiosity about the subject. Do you see that turning around among the masses, possibly sometimes within the next couple of years? Yes, it will. It will, because it, the, the thing is, most of whatever has been covered up and all the the, the unofficial and so-called official stories, stories that were not official uh, will come to the surface and it will become mainstream so that people will come to the realization that, in a sense, that uh, what we've been told and what was being propagated as really what happened, uh, it was not so. So that, you know, a lot of the power that has been given to... Uh, various people that have been dictating what it is, it isn't. Because, I mean, that that's a big one. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, there's been many other, you know, uh, false flags that have occurred. And, and uh, right now, as much as it's covered up, look at it, look at, it at this point in time. Uh, it is being covered up, and most people don't want to know. But as the uh, consciousness continues to shift, people are going to be interested to see what's really taking place. Because anyone that's really wanting to find out will find out, because th there's so much information. And anybody that actually can put two and two together, and with the, with all the alternate information that has been much more clear, because it makes even more sense, and you can see how it all connects, uh, can get can get the true story of what really what happened. But yes. Most people are not interested at this point in time, but it will become more mainstream as we go along. For sure, there will be more of it by the end of this year, and then from there it will continue to progress. And then it will become a mute po point by the time we're stepping into 2017, because at that point in time, we're not going to even give it any power. We'll see that you know that was a game we were played, and yes, it was all Do safe. you see any uh, chance of a martial law? Uh, coming about if there is a crisis in confidence in government and there is a maybe a, a escalation of, uh, of resistance? Do you see uh, a, a drama called martial law happening? 
There's a potentiality, but it's not enough to say a certainty at this point in time. Because the thing is, most of, if you the martial law would have stepped in because there was already enough to 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 get to that point. But at the same time, we're looking at this year. We're, we're going to definitely because of the weather patterns and a lot of things that were stimulated through harp and whatever else has occurred. And we can't say we can't blame it as only at that because it is still part of a collective uh, intensification that is occurring. But by that, we're going to have, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's looking right now, unless there's a more intervention that occurs, a uh, shortage of food, and then there's going to be uh, more instability in the financial aspect of it. So the fact that the resources will be cut back in the, on the financial, especially on the lower end uh, versus the ones that, uh, you know, have massive savings. But then with with that, of course, it's going to, you know, if we're going to respond, they could, it can look like a um, rioting and so forth, and then the martial law may be able to step into to that. But that, even if it does happen, and at this point is not a for sure, it's a it's a, a pretty good probability at this point. It will it will not last very long because the fact that uh, there will be a huge awakening accordingly. And uh, because look at look at even the the organized movements and so forth that have occurred all over the world. You know, people are still going with peace. They may be demanding change. They may be, you know, pushing the the the, the governments and other control structures to to make a change or to pull them out of uh, power or anything of that nature. But you know, they're not creating massive riots. Really, the the the, the reaction is by the ones that are supposed to be enforcing it. But look at what's happening. Even the ones that are enforcing, a lot of them are are joining the side of the of the 99% or what you want to call the people that are are um, being governed, right? So in essence, they, they're they starting to come more and realizing, hey, wait a minute, whatever we're doing is part uh, of... Hello, are you guys done talking, by the way? Because I just got disconnected. Yeah, uh, we're almost hello? done. Hello? Almost done, yes. Yeah, yeah I'll finish up. I got, after, you, after you're finished, i got to let this caller go because i got one more thing I want to discuss with you, Franco. Okay. 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 Well, thank you very much, Frank. I really appreciate your response. I appreciate that you're here to, to communicate your, your experiences. And if you want to comment after I hang up about, are we going to see a, a general decline in human suffering, or is it is it still possible that we could have, uh, you know, a, this global suffering because of financial collapse or, or some other process uh, such as a false flag, a big false flag event, etc.? Or do you see the, a general decline in suffering? Anyway, that's my question. Yeah, there, there'll be a general decline as we go along. There might be some intensification for a short period of time, but in general it'll be a decline and then eventually it won't even exist because the suffering, again, is something that uh, we're, is still part of the polarized world that we're holding and use, utilizing at this point. For us to have a place where we don't have enough for everybody, uh, when we have the capability to make sure everyone has exactly what they need and all that they need, uh, is definitely needs a, a certain really restricted state of consciousness because we do have the capability to, to provide and we don't need to have the have and have nots. That's been in the old polarized world where, you know, enslavement and all that stuff, which was part of our experience, but we are stepping out of that. So the decrease and eventually uh, the wiping out of all this uh, have and not having and so forth will change along the way. But it, there may be more intensification during this period of the uh, year or so, only to uh, kind of uh, clear out the clear out the rest of the uh, intense experiences that uh, we're still attached to. Yes, and it could backfire. It could increase the awakening. Well, thank you very much, Franco. I am so pleased uh, with uh, with your your messages. Thank you again. You're you welcome. have a good day, and I'm hanging up. <laughs> you too. So, Andrew, are you still around? Let's hang tight, because I, I think Andrew may have gotten dropped again, but we'll wait for him to get back. Oh, hello. That's uh, the caller. I guess he hung up. All right. I just got disconnected again. This happened at the end of last week's show, where we kept getting disconnected over and over and over um, at the end of the show, so I had to end it soon. Hopefully, that won't happen now, but if it does, I'll just let you go, Franco, because I got to get ended eight, but I'm glad you finished that. One more thing I want to discuss. We have um, You have eight minutes to talk about this, by the way, just so you know. Um, 
first of all, planet Earth, the New World Order may seem like it's going to take over, but it will never succeed because at its most deepest level, Earth, as well as everything, is truly love-based, fear is an illusion, everything is infinite love, the New World Order can try it once, but it won't be able to take over. However, they are using something to try to take over to a great extent, and that is what David Icke called the Saturn Moon Matrix. I want you to talk about this, but just so I can briefly cover this. Okay. Uh, I didn't catch all of it because I think you may have dropped off. But uh, regarding, yeah, the New wor World Order and all of the, the plans that they had to create an enslaved race and so forth of that nature is not, at this point in time, going to unfold. Uh, and, you know, as much as they, they, they are still pushing for it, the, um, the, the, ra the rise in consciousness, the, the awareness that people are coming to, the self-empowerment that's taking place at this point in time will not uh, occur. Now, even any false flag in regarding uh, alien uh, uh, raids or anything of that nature coming onto the planet or uh, the Matrix influence from the moon or from Saturn at this point in time, uh, all of that is breaking down anyways. Uh, as much as they're trying to utilize any of that, uh, there is a higher order in a sense when we call a higher order. It's a higher order being a higher level of consciousness beings, which are facets of ourselves that are, you know, making sure that uh, we are not going to slip into uh, a deeper and darker state of that uh, nature. Now, there are versions of the planet that are experiencing that, but in our essence, we do not need to drop into that uh, state of experience. So, in this case... Uh, as we move forward, uh, you know, I, I would not put attention into that uh, at this point in time because in our energy as we start to discover ourselves that we are pure, infinite beings and of love, that uh, no matter what plays out, we will not have any effect. So even the matrix itself, because I know there is the original matrix, which the planet uh, and all planets have, which are a very self-evolving uh, matrix which uh, support the uh, the experience. And we have had a superimposed matrix that was put in and supported by the moon uh, through the satellite uh, cap capacity that the new uh, matrix that they're trying to influence in that is uh, seen from Saturn will not actually be able to be taken in effect because there is a, f a field of energy that is not allowing it to, to do so. As much as the intention may be there, they will not be able to take it off or get it uh, get it going. All right, thanks, Franco. I did get disconnected, as you probably guessed. I'm glad you were able to cover it by talking about the uh, Saturn Moon Matrix in a little bit. I know it goes very complicated. Uh, than just a basic thing that you can discuss in five minutes because the moon is the ball and chain around Earth's feminine energy and uh, the uh, Saturn broadcasting system does play a role in that. But I spoke with George Cavazos about that on a couple of occasions when I interviewed him two times and he uh, told me it's a lot uh, deeper than that. There's a lot more to it. Uh, David Icke has talked about that in great detail in his book, The Perception Deception. It just came out. I ordered it on pre-order, got it a couple of days ago. It's almost a thousand pages and I'm going to find a way to read it, and I encourage everybody else to to try to do the same. But, um, well, Franco, um, it was great having you on. We do have a little bit of time, but in all honesty, I don't know if it's really a great idea to continue because chances are we're going to keep breaking up because this happened last week. I'll talk to Blog Talk Radio about this, but um, it was a pleasure having you on, and I'm going to tell you the same thing I tell all my guests. I want to try to get as many different people on this show as possible before I give anyone double dips. So, don't expect a call from me in the near future because there's a lot of fascinating individuals who deserve a chance to have some glory on my show. But I wish I could have you out again, but other people need a chance. So thanks for coming on, and um, I guess maybe I'll keep in touch with you when I call into the C.J. Miller show when you're on again. Absolutely. That would be great. Well, thank you for making it available for, for us to, to, to play together. I'm, it's too bad that uh, you know it, it didn't uh, work as well in the sense that you kept kept getting dropped off. Hopefully that uh, it's all intact in the recording aspect of it. But uh, if so, then you know there's always the playback that people can tune into. And and then whenever it does come to the opportunity to play again, I'm always open so we can uh, we can entertain it. All right. Well, Franco, I can hear you now, but I don't think I'll be able to hear you for long. So. Anything else you want to say in the last 10 seconds, I'll let you on. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, we're up. moving forward, and uh, at this point in time, it's uh, it's really up to us to uh, make uh, uh, upgrades and changes within ourselves. 
to focus uh, with the changes in ourselves while uh, connecting with other aspects of ourselves that are moving forward. This this movement, uh, especially in the cycle that we're in right now, is all about oneness. It's about coming together. And this is what makes your radio show and other radio shows and people like-minded coming together and sharing information, expanding consciousness and so forth makes it much more powerful because it keeps reaching further and further and further. And there are more and more people that are hungry for much more powerful information, much more expansive information that is uh, going to change their perception, going to shift their their realities and, and create a new world. So our new world is really created by us and us are uh, changing. So all of us are working together to uh, to upgrade and, and assist each other along the way. All right. Thanks a lot, Franco. I'm glad okay. you want to finish it off on a great note. I'll lift into this whole thing again. All right. Thanks a lot. Take all care right, now. Take care. Good night, everybody. Well, folks, uh, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be on because uh, I keep getting knocked off. Blog Talk Radio will be hearing it from me. But, um, Definitely listen to that whole thing again. Have no choice, just like I had no choice with last week's show. But might as well fill you all all in on the upcoming plans. I already said earlier in the show I'll be having Brian Toey on in two weeks to talk about how sports is fixed, not just in America, but the rest of the world. And uh, he also wrote a book about the police state, too, I believe. It's not just sports that he's in. We'll probably talk about that, too. But next week, however, I am scheduled to have Randy Kelton who was one of Eddie Craig's co-hosts on Rule of Law Radio. Had Eddie Craig on uh, um, a couple weeks ago, and uh, that was a fascinating interview all about law. We'll be getting into other things in regards to law on next week's show, uh, February 12th, with Randy Kelton. I wanted to have his uh, Rule of Law co-host, Deborah Stevens, on, but he said, if you try to kill two birds with one stone by having me and Deborah on, I'm probably going to be the bird that gets stoned. (laughs) I don't know why I think I can understand why he says that. Deborah's got a really big attitude. She's a fascinating individual, uh, a woman with the mentality of a man. That's how she fights for our rights. <laughs> but he uh, said he doesn't really think it's a good idea to have them both on. So it would probably just be Randy Kelton on. He uh, has a little difficulty talking because he has a hearing aid. It's funny how if you can't hear properly, you can't really talk properly. But he uh, I think it was in the Vietnam War, when he, uh, which was a total phony war, <laughs> all stage because of a lie, Gulf of Tonkin. He was a veteran in that, and he lost his hearing and uh, some of his hearing. And But it's uh, got a fascinating show on LogosRadioNetwork.com. If any of you want to tune in uh, Thursday nights at, um, I think it's uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, and uh, Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, there's a four-hour marathon show that he also um, hosts. He's an expert on due process and the foreclosure issue. And he's also read a couple books on extraterrestrials, like The Twelfth Planet by Zachariah Sitchin. I think maybe just for the heck of it, we'll we'll talk about that. So, uh, Randy Kelton is on next week. I'm glad uh, I was able to get this whole show in for the most part without any problems except for the sound. Uh, I don't like getting kicked off. Sometimes you have to wonder if your microphone, the computer will recognize the microphone because sometimes it doesn't. I wonder why. 